we've covered the any device and let's dig into the any app part of our strategy. And ultimately, why do we do infrastructure? It's ultimately to enable new applications and services. That's the purpose behind building and running infrastructure, the lifeblood of every business. But unfortunately, we see this gap. You know, down here is the infrastructure team, and over there is those crazy application folk, right? And, you know, they're trying to get certain things done and really don't understand the operational and security and management challenges. And ultimately, that gap slows down and creates political silos and separations. So how can we help close that gap? How can we bring these two worlds together? How can we not only bring them together, but increase the speed of that environment as well? And every business today sees the need for speed to go faster. Build apps, test them, put them in production, and update them as rapidly as possible. And ultimately, IT wants to do the same thing. But IT can't just say, we're going to do that willy-nilly. We need to do that also meeting the security, stability, the infrastructure and resilience requirements as well. You know, a few years ago, as the container discussion began, it was this discussion of VMs versus containers. That debate is over. It's a world of VMs and containers. That's our future. The number one company in containers, arguably, is Google. Google runs 100% of their containers in VMs. Containers are efficient, lightweight, and portable. Their value proposition is aimed to the app and the developer. However, they're inadequate to meet the infrastructure and operations requirements. The ugly truth is cool new apps are also a combination of cool new container stuff and interacting with existing services from the existing environments as well. Ultimately, we're about enabling the big easy button to bridge these two worlds together, to enable the container world of tomorrow and to operationalize that in a consistent infrastructure. Containers and VMs speed time to market, bridge the old and the new without compromising security and management. This is what drove us to launch PKS. The VMware Pivotal Container Service is about bringing the best of both worlds. It's about giving that container environment that your developers want while solving the operational requirements of putting them into production for IT as well. A developer-ready infrastructure that's production-ready. Ability to continue delivering apps on a single platform. Google. Pivotal and VMware announced that VMworld last year, this coming together to enable PKS or the Pivotal Container Service. Built on Google Kubernetes, container management, the de facto standard in the environment, Pivotal Bosch for day one, day two deployment and automation, and VMware NSX bringing together security and networking all on a common VMware SDDC cloud environment. We've seen huge customer interest in the eight months since we've launched this service. But to help me talk about it, I'd like to welcome to the stage none other than Chad Sackett. Please join me in welcoming Chad to the stage. Chad? Chad, how are you doing? Hey, everybody. Now, now Chad, you know, I, I got a problem. Uh-huh. You know, you're like virtual geek. You know, you're like the storage guy. What on earth is going on here? Okay. Right? Aren't are, are anything inviolate? In? So, Pat, you can't do that because I also have a mic. Yeah. So I looked up. You and I have been working together now for 10 years. 10 years, man. You were younger then. I had more hair, but you were younger too. <laughs> the, so. You know, so talk to us about this, right? You know, you've made an extraordinary, I mean, everybody here knows virtual geek, storage <laughs> guy, Chad, but you've moved to yeah. the application world at Pivotal. You know, help us. What's going on, man? So my passion inside the Dell Technologies family has always been the intersection of technology. So I think that that's where the magic happens for the customers. Mm. Uh, making Dell EMC storage be the best for VMware. Okay. So via VASA plugins for vCenter. Then the next stage was how do we bring compute, network, and storage together in the industry's best HCI. Okay, I'm going to and, touch on that today. And I'm sure you will. I can't wait to see. Um, 
The, Making the, you proud, I promise. That's good. The next thing here is, is how do we bring together Pivotal and VMware's technologies to kind of move the container ecosystem forward? And uh, it's really exciting, man. It's awesome stuff. Well, it's great to have you in this capacity. I'm sure you're going to be passionate and enthusiastic here. There's only one gear in the Chad gearbox. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody knows that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was describing this PKS picture here, but there's also PCF, and you know, tell me how these two worlds fit together. Yeah, so earlier you said any app, any device, any cloud, right? In the world of these new cloud-native applications, they like different types of abstractions. Um, sometimes a customer says, I'm just going to give you my code, and I want you to figure out all the details. Here's my code, I want you to run it in the cloud, I don't care how. Uh, in that environment, this idea of the pivotal application services suits uh, those customers, uh -huh, uh -huh. generally when they're building a brand new cloud native app, or they're going to take an existing application and completely re rebuild it. Um, and the customers that do that are legion, they love it, it's great. But the realization that we came to together is that there's a huge community of applications that can just be containerized. In that case, the app, the app owner comes and says, I'm giving you my container image, I want you to run it, and I don't care how. And being able to support both of those abstractions on one common platform is something that's very unique to what we're doing. And notice in this picture, they have a very common base. So Bosch brings the simplicity to Kubernetes that Kubernetes brings to containers. It makes lifecycle management simple and easy. NSXT solves one of the biggest container and cloud native problems, which is their networking stack is relatively primitive. And NSXT is awesome. And all of that always on that VMware SDDC base. Well, that's very exciting, Chad. And clearly, you know, since we announced this partnership, yep. and clearly, you know, we're part of the same family, so we were sort of working together. But, you know, since we've announced PKS and the coming together of this offering, you know, I'll just say customers have really, really gotten excited about it. You know, the full support and power of Dell Technologies family, but really VMware and Pivotal sharing that point uh -huh. of the arrow, it's just been transformational for our joint customers. And maybe you can talk about a few of those customers, Chad. Yeah, so, so we have hundreds of joint customers, many of whom are here in the room. And, and thank you, by the way, for being our customers. It means a ton to Pat, to me, to everybody. Um, I love these stories because, A, they're face-meltingly awesome, <laughs> but also because they're awesome because what it means for the customers. So a couple of these I'm just going to give a little shout out. So like the Allstate example was they built a new application uh, that basically was the Good Hand Rescue app. So when you are an Allstate customer and you need assistance, it's a simple, easy mobile app that allows you to go in and say, I need help. Now, that doesn't sound like that big a deal, but it actually changed the world for their customers and for them because very quickly they were able to build an application that saves them tens of millions of dollars now, hundreds of millions in the future because they can go, you know what, I don't need to send a truck. This person just needs gas, right? And if you're a customer of all states, that actually means that when you do need a tow, it comes faster. So it's making things better for them and okay. their customer. Very good. Uh, another example, uh, Ford. So Ford won, uh, Ford won a great award uh, earlier in, in uh, one of the earlier sessions uh, about the Ford Pass app. Who here has a Ford? Raise your hand. Swarm up your shoulders. Okay. Right? Yeah. So there's a large number of you out there that have Fords. Uh, this is a mobile app that allows you, Ford Pass allows you to basically unlock your car, see gas, be able to figure out where there's parking, get some telemetry from your car. Again, being able to do that together with Pivotal and VMware helps Ford, helps their customers move the world forward, right? Um, by the way, Ford, uh, I, any, I am in the market for a Ford F-150. So... Uh, just come on, come on, get on me. with the keynote. Get, okay. <laughs> so, but there's one on here that I think is the, my favorite. Okay. Um, so the Bank of Jamaica. The Bank of Jamaica, you got to be kidding me. That's your favorite one on here? Yeah, and you know why? It's not because I have an offshore you know, banking interest uh. or anything like that. <laughs> um, it's because this is the story that's almost the opposite of the others. So this customer just wanted 100 containers. Not 1,000, not 50,000, just 100. You could run that on one super awesome 14G PowerEdge server. You could run that on one ESX host, right? But what they needed was they needed it to be simple because they don't have like cloud native experts and DevOps practices and they're not a unicorn. 
They needed something simple. We got them up and running in PKS in two days, and their response in the email from the CIO was one word, wow. Well, you know, the customer response has been great, and the number of these customers, this has been their first NSX deployment as well, which is exciting, you know, as we see it pulling forward some of the VMware technologies. So that's great. But, you know, I've said any application, right? And we're really preparing customers to deal with today's workloads, the emerging container ones, but talk to us a little bit about those future technologies and how those are adopted yeah, as well. Yeah, so, you know, I love the idea. Any app, you know, any, any device, any cloud, because it means that we have to support all of these abstractions. Let's be clear, the VM abstraction, just to using it directly, is the majority of workloads today. Mm -hmm. It's the majority of workloads. And as you said, containers live on kernel mode VMs. That's the best way to deploy containerized stacks. So you can see that's basically going from the left over to the right into PaaS and into PKS. But in the same way that the R&D team started work on PKS long before we announced it, one thing that I think is so cool is the innovation that happens inside the engineering and R&D teams. I wish we could just bring everybody in all the time, right? <laughs> They've been it's working. Scary, it's but... scary, but it's so cool. So we've been working for the last year on how do we tackle the next abstraction, which is serverless and functions. Mm -hmm. And there's some really cool intellectual property within Pivotal called Spring Riff, you know, the dominant serverless or functions model for, for, for Spring. There's some really cool IP inside VMware called Dispatch, which is how do you make this work for different things. Google's working on some interesting things. You guys would not believe how the engineering teams inside the ecosystem crank together. And what you should expect, I'm not making an announcement, but what you should expect is that this functions and serverless abstraction will be the next thing that we develop. But notice one thing that matters for everybody here in this room. It runs on the platform that is your standard. It's the vSphere environment that you know and love. It's the SDDC stack that you know and love. And by the way, the best way to do that is on our HCI, uh -huh. VxRail and VxRack. Well, that'll be the next thing up on the agenda for this morning, Chad. Now, what do you think? Has Chad done a reasonable impersonation of an application guy? <laughs> Chad, thank you so much. Thanks, bud.